Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let us start with our tributes. And the first person that we are going to hear from is Otumba Femi Pedro. He is a former deputy governor of Lagos State, um, a technocrat, a banker. Otumba Femi Pedro. Good evening. Distinguished guests. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just five minutes for a four page document. <laughs> Let me first thank the family for allowing me to share a few words about a man I greatly respected and admired an accomplished and God-fearing man, Otumba Michael Olashibomi Balogun. Throughout history of private enterprise, there are individuals who through their vision, tenacity, and leadership have left indelible marks on societies, industries, and nations. These men Cuts across several generations. But personally, I found inspiration in a remarkable individual closer to home, a visionary, a trailblazer, a courageous and determined entrepreneur, a professional par excellence. It was in early 1984, as a young graduate, in the research department of the Central Bank of Nigeria, when I first heard of Otumba Shibomi Balogun, one bright morning on my way to work, I tuned on the radio and listened to the live interview he granted. During the hour-long interview, he detailed his life journey, his struggles to invest and own a financial institution against all odds, and how he eventually succeeded. He was just 50 years old at the time and was already fully accomplished. As a trailblazer, he dared to establish a bank in an era when such endeavor was almost unthinkable. Instantly, I became fascinated by his story and his path to Sussex. I started dreaming of someday following in his footsteps. He began as my role model, and through a twist of fate, he became my mentor, whose influence will shape the trajectory of my professional journey. In 1988, as a senior economist at the Central Bank, fate led me into his professional orbit. Having just completed an extensive pro program in Brazil, I began managing the debt conversion desk at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Otumba Balogun, ever the visionary entrepreneur, quickly recognized the potential value of trading in Nigerian promissory notes. The bank immediately partnered with a notable UK investment house called Morgan Grenfell & Co. He immediately sought me out and recruited me out of Central Bank. I remember the day I got my letter of appointment. The salary offered was four times my earning at the Central Bank. I was scared. I thought it was an error. I went back to Dr. Jonathan Long, then the managing director, to seek clarification whether there was a mistake. And he said, no, that was what they were offering me. I was grabbed with fear. I went back to my boss at the central bank and showed him my letter of employment. And he sat me down, cautioned me, seriously, you are playing with your life. With this kind of salary, there's something they are looking for. 
So I carried the letter of employment in my pocket for days, scared. But after much thought, something kept telling me that this is what you have been dreaming of. I decided to walk into the bank and accepted the job. Despite my youth and relative inexperience compared to other colleagues, Otumba gave me a chance. He believed in my potential. Just a few weeks after I resumed work, he paired me with uh, Remy Adetayo, the man who gave the eulogy, and we shared the same office. And we're doing almost the same work. He was actually my boss in the corporate affairs department, where at the same time I was running the debt conversion desk. And so one day, he sent for me. You hardly go to the executive office unless there is a compelling reason. So I was wondering why Otsumba would send for me. So I went to the executive office. I was shaking like a leaf. And I entered the all-inspiring office of Otsumba. You needed to be there to see. And he looked at me. And he said, you look scruffy. But I'm going to change you. <laughs> I'm moving you to my office as my executive assistant. The previous occupant of that office were the star of the bank, Femi Akinsonya, Bengadi Juigbe. So I was wondering why he chose me. And of course, I was scared. So I spoke with the personal assistant. That was uh, Mrs. Buxola Adekusibe. This was in the year 1987. And she assured me that I will be okay. Uh, can you imagine you having an office right in front of the executive office of Tumba Shibomi Balogun? One day he came to work. And I was wearing my shirt and tie without a jacket. And he yelled at me, why are you naked in my office? <laughs> I had to rush back home to grab my jacket. Becoming the executive assistant meant an immediate shift in my ways. I had to accompany him to most of his outside official functions including board meetings and other sensitive appointments. I quickly realized that this could be a training ground and a stepping stone to higher responsibilities. I'm fortunate to have landed such a posting among many other young and highly talented colleagues. My transformation was swift from my appearance to my professional demeanor. I will study Otsumba's dressing and I will go with Remy Adetayo to the back of Mandela's building. <laughs> Searching for a similar suit that mostly resemble. <laughs> I began to walk like him. To speak like him. To watch his every demeanor. Such was the great influence Otumba Shibomi had on a young man like me. <clears throat> Working closely with this extraordinary figure, a trailblazing professional, a successful, determined, and courageous entrepreneur, significantly shaped my worldview. His mentorship and personal values catalyzed an invaluable transformation in me. After two years of working directly under his tutelage, it was time to realize my dream. The seeds of Sussex he planted bloomed and inspired me to join a group of young and idealistic professionals, led by Mr. Fola Deola and Tayo Adiriokun of blessed memory. to seek a banking license, resulting in the formation of Guarantee Trust Bank in 1990. 
this was perhaps one of the most difficult decisions I ever made in my life. To exit a vibrant and very successful bank led by a visionary and inspirational personality and to leave an auspicious position as his executive assistant to join a newly licensed and untested bank. With mixed feelings, I accepted the offer to join Guarantee Trust Bank as a senior manager and head of corporate finance. I was excited to join this new team of idealistic and visionary young professionals who were focused and determined to change the face of banking. At the same time, I was scared going into the unknown and more importantly, how to break the news to my chairman, Otumba. I remember that Otumba did not find it funny when the last set of close associates resigned to join newly licensed banks. Otumba was very jealous and possessive employer. He never liked to lose his talents, those he had nurtured and trained to other competitors. But between 1988 and 1990, the industry was tumultuous. 25 new banks were licensed, and many needed to poach talents from successful banks like FCMB. Around this period, the likes of Erastus Akinbola, Femi Akinsoya, Dakposho Luade, Babajide Rojas, Akinfatade, and a few others, too numerous to mention, who were holding sensitive position, exited the bank. Instinctively, I knew it would be a complicated thing to break the news to him. I was ruminating how I would go and tell him I was leaving. So I shared my worries with his personal assistant, Mrs. Adeku Sibe, and she just laughed and told me, ha, Babati Golata no. My heart sank. I decided to brave it. I entered his very posh and awe-inspiring office with fear and trepidation. Before I could utter a word, Baba said, Ha, ah, Femi, I had you are leaving us to join one of these new banks. I just prostrated. <laughs> like I will be without saying a word. And he surprised me. He started praying for me. And he started wishing me well in my new assignment. At Guarantee Trust Bank, one of our most strategic profit centers at that time was a unit called Financial Institutions, FI for short. The primary goal of that unit was to become the bank of first choice to merchant banks in Nigeria, and FCMB was our first target. The moment we opened business in 1991, Mr. Fola Diola, the MD, then wisely suggested that rather than market FCMB, why didn't we just honor the founder and chairman CEO of the bank who blazed the trail and made possible for the new generation banks like GT Bank to exist. Led by our MD, we invited Otumba to visit and tour our facility. I can see I Ganaba smiling because we were there that day together. We laid the red carpet from uh, Adiyemwala Kija to Otumba's house, which was a stone throw. And the entire staff of Guarantee Trust Bank lined the street. And when Baba came out of the house and saw the red carpet and us, he was so happy. <laughs> Let me quickly round off. I have to skip so many other things I would love to say. But let me just say that Otumba has had a great touch on my life. I'm who I am today because I started my professional journey right under his tutelage. And when I became the deputy governor of Lagos State, he was the happiest man ever. He honored me with a reception, and still the day he passed on, 
he always took me as one of the children. And I'm letting the children know that I am Baba's first son. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a great Nigerian has gone home. Soon re Baba, may your dead to soul rest in perfect peace. Femi, since you decided to let the cat out of the bag about Mandela's. Oh. Now, the house of Mandela's. The house of, oh, the house of Mandela's. You, I, I know we don't have time, but I'll let you off. You never talked about the missing biscuit. Baba's biscuit, biscuit that got missing, and it was an issue in Primrose Tower that day. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Another round of applause, please, for Otumba Femi Pedro. Very lively memories. Touching ones, too. Thank you so much.